Hello. Happy Donor Conception Awareness Day. My name is Cassandra. You can call me the DNA fairy for today. My pronouns are she, her, hers, and I'm here to read you a book and to talk to you a little bit about how babies are made. So today we're going to read the book, What Makes a Baby by Corey Silverberg. And then we're going to talk a little bit more about how babies are made and the parts needed to make a baby. So we're going to start the book. This is a story about how babies are made. The first thing you need to know is that you can't make a baby out of nothing. You have to start with something. And lucky for you, we have something. This is an egg. Not all bodies have eggs. Some do and some do not. Inside the egg are so many stories all about the body the egg came from. Now, this is a sperm. See the little tail? Not all bodies have sperm in them. Some do and some do not. Inside the sperm, just like inside the egg, there are so many stories about the body that the sperm came from. When grown-ups want to make a baby, they need to get an egg from one body and a sperm from another body. They also need a place where the baby can grow. This is a uterus. It is a place where a baby can grow. You might think that everyone has a uterus since it has the words you and us in it, but not everyone has a uterus. Just like eggs and just like sperm, some bodies have a uterus and some bodies do not. Everybody that has a uterus always has it in the same place, just below the belly button in the squishy middle part. So that's where, where a baby grows. When an egg and a sperm meet, oh, I'll show you. Look, <gasps> they met. They swirl together in a special kind of dance. As they dance, they talk to each other. The egg tells the sperm all the stories it has to tell about the body it came from. And the sperm tells the egg all the stories it has to tell about the body that it came from. When their dance is done, they are not two things anymore. They danced around and they shared so much that they became one brand new thing. And at first it's just a tiny thing. Sometimes this tiny thing doesn't grow and sometimes it grows into a baby like you did, like I did. I'll show you what that little thing is. These are a few little cells of what it looks like when a baby starts to grow. Who helped bring together the sperm and the egg that made you? Who was happy that it was you who grew? Everything that grows, grows differently. Each of us grow in our own way. How a baby grows depends on the stories that the egg and the sperm share and on the uterus the baby is growing inside of. But before a baby can be born, it has to get bigger and bigger and bigger. This usually takes about 40 weeks. And that's when someone is pregnant. Sometimes the baby is ready to come out on its own. 
And sometimes a midwife or a doctor will be the one to say it is time for the baby to be born. No matter who decides, the baby does not just hop out by itself. Some babies are born by coming out through a part of the body that most people call the vagina. And other times, doctors will make a special opening below the belly button, take the baby out, and then close up the hole. Whichever way the baby comes out, it's a pretty big deal for the baby. It's also a pretty big deal for the people who waited and waited and waited for the baby to be born. Sometimes it takes a long time, sometimes it's quick, sometimes it hurts a little, sometimes it hurts a lot, but usually everyone needs lots of rest after. Who was waiting for you to be here? Who was waiting for you to be born? So, now that we talked about that, now that we read that beautiful book by Corey Silverberg about how babies come into the world, let's talk a little bit more about all those parts that we needed, right? We needed three parts to make a baby. We needed an egg, from one body, a sperm from another body, and a uterus for the baby to grow in, right? We need three things for a human being to be here, to be born, to be made. And the beautiful thing is that we all come from those three parts. And the coolest thing is that no matter where those parts come from, we are just as human as anyone else, right? Right? It doesn't matter what body this comes from. It doesn't matter what body this comes from. Sometimes when the sperm and the egg come together, they come together in someone's body. Sometimes they come together in a doctor's office and the process is done by a doctor, right? No matter what way the egg and the sperm come together, they start to form the very beginnings of a little baby, right? Each one of these cells is a new person and this grows and grows and grows until it becomes a baby. And we all grow in a uterus. And sometimes these three parts can be from the people who raise us. Sometimes the egg comes from the same person the person who provides the uterus and sometimes they're different people right sometimes the person who provided the sperm is the person who raises us and sometimes they're not and sometimes the person who provided the egg is a person who raises us and sometimes they're not right and sometimes the person in whose uterus we grew is the person who raises us and sometimes they're not sometimes those are different people for me I have one person who raised me and a different person who gave a sperm to help make me, right? So we all have those different parts, but we all grow into people. We all grow into beautiful people who are made of those parts. So when somebody finds out that they're expecting a baby. There's usually lots of celebration, right? Usually once an egg and a sperm come together and you know that there's going to be a baby, everyone shouts, yay! Everyone's so, so, so excited, right? And the coolest thing is that now, remember I told you I was the DNA fairy, right? So what happens? Remember in the book it said that the sperm has stories and the egg has stories. They each have stories about the bodies that they come from, right? So the amazing thing is that once they come together and start to form a new little person, a whole new strand of DNA is created. Guess what? Every person in the whole world has a different DNA sequence. Isn't that cool? Unless you have a twin, right? Unless you have an identical twin. But 
One of these strands comes from the person who provided the egg, and the other strand comes from the person who provided the sperm. And all these little different colors in the middle, those make up your unique code about who you are. And that code tells us things like what you look like, what color your eyes are, what color your hair is, um, what your personality might be like, what things you're talented at, right? So DNA is unique to all of us, right? And it depends on the person who's who gave an egg to make us and the person who gave a sperm to make us. So we each have this unique DNA sequence that creates us and makes us who we are, which is amazing. And also the person whose uterus, look, this uterus is so excited. The person whose uterus we grew in can also affect things about who we are, right? The things that that person eats, um, if that person takes good care of themselves, that can make us nice and healthy too as we grow. So this is to say, that there are so many things that make us who we are, right? There's an egg and a sperm and the uterus that we grow in. And then sometimes there are people who raise us, right? Who are different from those people. And those people influence who we are, right? We learn from them. We are shown the world by them. It's incredible. And then we meet new people outside of our families, right? We meet friends and extended family and neighbors. And we learn so much about the world that makes us who we are, right? And sometimes the body, let's see. The body of the person who gave us the egg, sometimes they give eggs to other people too. So that makes us siblings with the person who gave with other people who came from that same body right or it can also work the other way sometimes the person who provided the sperm to help make us also provided a sperm for other people too to make other people and those other people there are siblings too there are brothers and sisters right because we're related we come from the same bodies isn't that cool so that means sometimes we share similarities in our DNA because our DNA is the stories. This is what the stories are from the egg and the sperm that helped make us. Isn't that amazing? And this, not quite so fuzzy and not quite so big, but something like this is in every cell in our body, all the building blocks of what make us up. It's amazing, it's incredible. So I want to be here today on Donor Conception Awareness Day to tell you that if you are donor conceived, like me, or if you're not, right, we all come into the world in these unique ways, but we're all coming from those same three things, the egg and the sperm and the uterus. We all need those things to grow. It's amazing, right? So I just wanted to end By giving you a little more, a little more DNA to come to uh, to look at, right? All the colorful DNA, all the ways in which we're all different, right? But all similar, right? I just want to emphasize that today, how all our family stories may be really unique and really special, but there's something that unites all of us, right? And that's the similarities in our DNA. I want to see. Thank you all so much. And I also wanted to show you a picture of me, the DNA fairy, when I was still a baby. What do you think? Was I cute? That was me. We were all little kids at one point, right? So happy Donor Conception Awareness Day. I'm always available for questions, whether it's from your adults or from kiddos, right? It's so wonderful to meet you. Take care. Have a happy Donor Conception Awareness Day and be proud of who you are, all the parts of who you are. Bye.